What is up guys, it's Bang Bang Chief Fan here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my top 10 favorite books of all time list as of right now. It may change in the future, but this is it. Top 10. Woo! I've done this video way too many times. I may be going insane, but I just need to get this done. I need a video before I go back to school in. So, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Let's get started. Number 10 is actually not a novel. The first two are not novels. One of them is a play, one of them is an epic poem. This is the epic poem. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's probably the Odyssey, right? That's a good guess, but you're wrong. I know a lot of people are going to be like, ah, this poem, yeah. But I love this, and it is Beowulf. Beowulf. I love Beowulf. What you gonna do about it? Beowulf is the oldest piece of English literature that we have. It centers around a man named Beowulf who goes into like a kingdom and saves the day from a monster named Grendel, and he and it's pretty much his life story, and it's beautifully captured. It is beautifully captured in this amazing tale. It's like, it has a good story. It has threatening villains and likable characters and even some complexity here and there. And this is a thousand years old. I don't know about you, but that's pretty shocking. Normally, a thousand year old tales are kind of like, eh, it's dull, bland. And I know a lot of people have that complaint with Beowulf, but I love it. I think it's fantastic, and I actually think it's superior to uh, The Odyssey, even though The Odyssey is fantastic, but this is actually a bilingual translation with uh, Shame by Seamus Haney. It actually has uh, the Old English on one side and the New English on another, so I, I can't recommend this enough. Even if you get spoilers for this thing, it's still a beauty to go through and see the olden language that's used, and it's just such a fascinating tale of just heroism and just even some uh, phil philosophy here and there, but Beowulf, read it. It's just fantastic. Number nine is the play I was talking about, and it is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. Oh my goodness. Have just... Oh my goodness, have the descriptions, have every complex line in this play just on my walls. Just make this entire room just coated with quotes from Waiting for Godot and Catcher in the Rye. This, this, oh my goodness, it's so good. This is one of the most quotable plays. No, this is the most quotable play I've ever read in my life. It's, it just has such complexity to it, has deepness into it. It just is so philosophical. It is so philosophical that I love it. I, I have a thing for really artsy and surreal things. I, I love surrealism. That's, if you're going to ask what my favorite type of art is, it's surrealism. It, no matter if it's art in like paintings or art in like literature or visuals. Oh my goodness. Waiting for Godot is the best. All it's about, all it's about is two men named Vladimir and Astrojon waiting for a man named Godot. That's it! It leads to so many possibilities, yet it's such a simple concept. And it's so beautifully done. There's so many theories that you can make with this play, and it's all packed into less than two hours. Yes, this play. I The performance I watched while reading this play was less than two hours long. It's pure gold. Simply put, it's just pure gold. I cannot recommend this enough. I've read a little bit of Shakespeare, I've read a little bit of Arthur Miller, and I've read a little bit of Samuel Beckett. And so far, the winner is Samuel Beckett because he wrote both this and the Endgame, which are both fantastic. And granted, I only read one Arthur Miller play, but it's Death of a Salesman, and that was pretty good, and I don't really like Shakespeare, but... Yeah, Samuel Beckett. There's a reason why he's my favorite playwright of all time. And this play is the major reason why. Number eight. Now we're getting into novel territory. So what's my first novel on the list? It is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Usually when they somebody puts a Kurt Vonnegut book into a 
a top 10 list, they usually put Slaughterhouse 5, which is a fantastic choice because Slaughterhouse 5 is one of the best books ever, but there's just this hint feeling inside me that says Cat's Cradle was more of an impact on me. This this book is just pure gold. It is just a phenomenal yet quick read. It has ginormous text. Even though it's like 300 pages, the text is ginormous in this book. You can easily fly through this book in like a day or so. But, oh my goodness, Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle. It has it has a unique concept and plot. The characters are all likable, especially Newt. I, I love Newt. I just have to say that out right, right now. And the vocabulary. It's so good. Vonnegut usually has these like terms here and there throughout the book. Like here, there's a term called Ice Nine, which I won't give away what it means. But it's centered, or at first it's just a random term, but it slowly as you get more and more into the book, it comes relevant with the plot. I love that. That's some of, one of my favorite parts of any author ever. And he doesn't just do it here. He does it in Slaughterhouse Five. He does it in Mother Night. He does it in uh, uh, what else does he does it in? He does he does it in all of his best books, pretty much. And it's just amazing. Cat's Cradle. There's such a unique twist to this that I I don't want to give it away. It's just pure gold. It's pure gold. Once again, it's pure gold. Number seven. Ever since I was in the classics, this was one I wanted to read, but I was going to read it for school in my senior year. But then I realized, I'm not in my senior year. I'm reading it. I'm reading it. And thank God I did, because it's one of the best books ever written. What is it? All right. It's F. Scott Fitzgerald. There should be a certain book in your mind. Everybody say it on the count of three. One, two, three. The Great Gatsby. I love this book. I absolutely adore this book. I, I feel like I don't give this book credit enough. It is a masterpiece of, it's a beautiful masterpiece that everybody should read once in their life. Even people who aren't into reading have read this book and absolutely adored it. And for good reason. It's not long at all. It's very short, like in less than 200 pages. You can, if you're that type of reader, you can usually read it in one sitting. But it's such deep, so deep, and you realize more and more about the story, and you realize more and more about the symbolism and the motives. The more you read it, I'm, I think this is definitely going to be a book I'm going to be reading more than once throughout my life. In fact, I may be reading it continuously throughout my life, because he, Fitzgerald captures the 1920s beautifully in this novel, and this novel was not. Not a hit at all when it first came out. It was just the legacy that made it such a big hit in his most famous novel. But F. Scott Fitzgerald, I'm not dubbing the year of 2016 the year of Fitzgerald for nothing. This beautifully captures everything that's great about literature and just how dark can get, it can get at times. The Great Gatsby. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's phenomenal. Number six. Now these books, ever since number seven, these are the books that legit changed my life forever. And this next book, it's a part of a collection, but I'm going to be talking about a specific book. It's John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. I want every, every time Lenny speaks about rabbits, it, it, just makes me feel so happy. And then that ending happens. And it makes me feel so sad. Never have I been fanboying over a character. Like something that happened at the end of a book. Not even with some of these best books. Did I actually know. Maybe number three I did. But I was. I never had a novel so short connect with me so much. Than with Of Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men. It follows these two men named George and Lenny who have been friends for a long time as they go get out a, get a job out on a farm and or a plantation. And it's... Oh, it's so heartfelt. It packs in a hundred pages character development, density, complexity, 
and just so much symbolism. You can read this over and over and over again and get something new out of it every time. It's, it's another one like The Great Gatsby. You can read this over and over and over again. And of my cement, if I were to stay here all day, stay here all day, I'd be just talking about this book. But we're we're not even the top five yet, and I'm already just ah, because it's of my cement is so good. It, it's the novel that made me love John Steinbeck. It's my first John Steinbeck novel, and I'm glad I started out with a bang because of my cement is one of the greatest novels of the 20th century, and I can say that by far, of my cement gets the highest of recommendations from me. You saw how much I praised The Great Gatsby and Of Mice and Men. Now you might be wondering, what's in your top five? Well, that's a very good question. Number five is Great, Expecta <laughs> Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This was one. Of, this was my ever first. No, Tale of Two Cities was my first ever Dickens novel. But this novel made me fall in love with Dickens, and for good reasons. This is such a phenomenal book. It's easily one of the greatest novels ever written. It's so beautifully written. You know all these characters: Pip, Estella, Joe, Miss Havisham, Miss Havisham. Oh my goodness, Miss Havisham, she is unique, I'll say that much, <laughs> but great expectations. I cannot even describe how glorious, how beautifully put together this book is. You can feel that Charles Dickens really took his time. He knew that his career was coming to an end re relatively soon, so he put all of his life he put all of his, like, passion into this relatively short novel. It's, I mean, it's short for Dickens. It's rather long for a normal novel, but it's shorter for Dickens. But it's gorgeous. It's symbolic. It's complex. It has everything that I could ever ask for in a novel. All these books from now on have everything that I can ask for in a novel. Even some earlier books on this list have, are missing at least that one thing that prevents it from being higher on the list. Great Expectations had everything. It had beautiful, it had a beautiful story, it had a beautiful character, beautiful characters, beautifully put together structure and pacing and a setting that you can just dive right into. It's a beautiful masterpiece, and I'm safe to say that I'm so happy to have it in this gorgeous Easton Press edition. Just great expectations blew me away. Just, I keep saying this, but what else do I have to say? Now, number four, this book is so underappreciated by everyone. People keep saying, oh, it's long, it's boring, there's pointless parts to it. That's complete crap. That's complete crap. This book has a 3.43 average out of 5 on Goodreads. And that's unacceptable because this is one of the greatest novels ever written. You don't want to know? You want to know what it is? It's Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Oh my god, this is so great. I flew through this 800-page novel in four days. Never in my life have I done something like that. Moby Dick is a masterpiece of epic proportions. How Great Expectations was a beautiful masterpiece, this is an epic masterpiece. It's so, it's action-packed, it has deep character development, it has, it has such fantastic characters. Queequeg, Queequeg is Oh my goodness, Queequeg is one of the most interesting characters I've ever come across. Just Queequeg. It's... And everybody just g gives this book pointless flack for, like, being too long and boring. But it's not... I didn't find it boring in the slightest. I found it to be absolutely fantastic. Just Moby Dick. It's gorgeous. 
some people say that a lot of people, some people say and are hesitant about all the, like, the constant chapters about whale anatomy and discussions of whales and how they're related to, like, art and literature and history and how it all comes down to being w related to whales. But honestly, those were fantastic parts of the book. Just genuinely beautiful parts of the book. But I will admit, the parts where they were telling a story were infinitely better. I, Moby Dick. Oh my goodness, we're not even in the top three yet. Moby Dick. It's the best. Number three. Now, a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, this doesn't count as literature. It's a, it's a graphic novel series. Really? Graphic novels, I feel when they're done right, they can be better than a lot of books. And this one takes the cake. It easily takes the cake for the greatest graphic novel series and just my favorite book series of all time. You want to know what it is? It's The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. This made me fall in love with the genius Neil Gaiman. Like, Neil Gaiman is the greatest author who's still alive. No doubt about it. He is... The art is just beautiful. The story is so complex. It spans out towards ten volumes, and it doesn't feel stretched out at all. It has some of the most famous characters in comic book lore, like Morpheus. Morpheus. Everything Morpheus says is gold. Tattoo! Everything Morpheus says on my, my face or something. It's, it's so fantastic. What else? I keep saying this. I keep saying these words. But who cares? What else do I have to say? What else do I have to say to convince you to read this masterpiece of a novel? A graphic novel, sorry. I keep... But... Ah, uh, the Sandman. This is what got me into, like, complex things. It was so fantastic. So fantastic. This was my first love, major love, in modern literature. And for good reasons. It's... Beautiful and epic. Barely anything does that. This was, I mentioned this in my booktube newbie tag, and it's the book that set my taste. It's the book that just blew me away through infinite worlds of dimension. It just helped me grab a passion for literature, and that is 1984 by George Orwell. Pretty much everything that was said in the booktube newbie tag is what I have to say here. Great, it's a phenomenal story. The characters are just so memorable. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that blew me away with this book. The themes. George Orwell is the master of themes. He can set so such amazing themes into one book that it just feels so dense reading it, yet you're never confused. Rarely anybody can ever do that successfully. And George Orwell, he's just amazing. He's just pure gold. I pretty much, if you want to see my more in-depth looks into 1984, just watch my booktube newbie tag, but there is a genuine reason why 1984 is number two on this list. But I know I'm kind of unenthusiastic now, but I think I've been recording for like 20 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, 1984. Just read it. It's, it's phenomenal. And now, we have gotten to number one. Honestly, I have to keep this short. I have to keep this short. In order to save humanity from boredom, from being here all day, I have to keep this one short. I have said this is my favorite book multiple times. I made you a whole video on this book someday. But, number one is none other than The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Sollinger. Symbolic, beautiful, disturbing, great. 
those are the best words to describe this absolute god-tier novel. This is just... I don't know what to say. It I, never has a piece of literature made me to the point just speechless. I am legitimately speechless. It, it just... Holden Caulfield. Holden Caulfield. The most relatable, deep, complex character I have ever come across in any piece of literature. This novel... The story, that there's not as much story as something like Moby Dick or Sandman, but it's easily made up by the fact that there's so much deep symbolism in this book. There is so much deep symbolism to this book. It will make you nauseous. And honestly, I cannot recommend this enough. I've recommended it to everybody who's into books. It makes me sad to see that this book is actually relatively not appreciated enough on book two. Like, I've seen some people hate this novel, and for bad reasons. It, if you don't like the novel, fine, but please don't call it a bad book, because it's not. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I've dragged out this video long enough, so I'm just gonna end it here. So that was my top 10 favorite books of all time, as of 2016, but... Whatever. <laughs> I've been... I've been in a slump of making videos lately, so tell me in the comments below what type of videos I should make. That will help me a lot. But, I've already dragged out this video long enough, so I'm gonna end it right here. Hands down. I'm Mega Man Chief Fan, and I'll see you later, guys.